Hi guys, it's Mr. Schwanekamp. I uh, hope everyone is doing well. Today we are talking about functions. We've dealt with functions before. Some of the stuff you've already seen, but today what we're going to do is we're going to focus on uh, operations on functions, so adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing functions, and then uh, we're going to do function composition, which is basically two functions put together. You might have seen this before uh, in first semester. You might not have. We'll see how this goes. All right, so here we go. Function notation. More than anything, this is about send it up. So add and subtract functions. G of x is equal to x minus 2. F of x is equal to that function. Both of these separately are good old-fashioned functions. What we're going to do is we are going to do g of x minus f of x. So we're going to do exactly what it says. Write down g of x. Put a minus sign. Write down f of x. The only thing that you might screw up is I'm subtracting all of f of x. And so when you write down more than one thing, throw that in parentheses. So it's going to be x cubed minus 4x. Now that we've done that, it's just a matter of solving. So I'm going to distribute that negative. So it's really x minus 2 minus x cubed plus 4x because I got to distribute it. That's the mistake you'll make. And then combine like terms. So negative x cubed. I've got a 4x and a 1x. So plus 5x minus 2. There's my answer. Let's do another one. Number 2. F, uh, f is that. G is that. F plus g of t. This is no different than this last problem. They could have written f of t plus g of t separately, or they can put it together like this. It's the same thing. So to do that, we're going to write down what f is. We're going to put a plus sign. We're going to write down what g is. There's no negative to distribute because I'm adding. So then I just combine like terms. I got t cubed. I've got a negative t squared. I've got a negative t and a positive 2t, so that's going to get me positive 1t. And then I've got a 5 left over. Boom. There's my answer. One more f minus g of n. That means write down f, put down a minus sign, write down g. But if you did that, you did it wrong because I got to put it in parentheses. Distribute that negative. That's the number one mistake students make. Now I can combine. I've got an n here and a negative 2n, so that's negative 1n. And then I've got negative 1 minus 1, negative 2. There's my answer. Cool. Multiplying, dividing, not hard. I'm sorry, adding, subtracting, not hard. Multiplying and dividing might be a little bit more annoying, but it's not bad either. G times H, that little closed dot means multiply. You know that. So we're going to write down G. Parentheses, write down H. And we're multiplying them, so we're putting them together. So for this one, all you got to do is good old-fashioned FOIL. So X squared times 2X is 2X cubed plus 3x squared, plus 2x, plus 3. There are no like terms. I put a box around it, and I move on. That's f times g. What about h divided by g? So h is first, so it's going to go on top, negative 3x plus 5, divided by g. Can I simplify this? We just did that in our rationals chapter. Nope. Put a box around it. We're done. That's it. That's easy. F times G, or yeah, F times G again. F times G. Distribute, so negative 4N cubed minus 2N squared minus 4N minus 2. Done. No like terms. That's an easy one. So adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Don't let that be hard. It's not. It's just a matter of doing it. All right, the one thing that you're going to see a lot of, and, and I teach calculus, and I do this in calc all the time, and you'll do it in pre-calc as well, f of g of x, okay, where you kind of have a function plugged in. Normally, we see f of x, but instead of an f, instead of right there, we have plugged in a whole nother function g of x. This right here is the same thing as this, f open circle g of x. Anytime I see the open circle like that, I'm thinking, oh yeah, they forgot to put a parenthesis right there. That's what that means. All right, so don't let that weird open circle bother you. It's the same thing. If I want to do f of g of x, all right, I don't particularly like that picture now that I look at it. Eh, don't look at that picture. <laughs> f of g of x, we are going to work from the inside out. So when we do f of g of x, you're going to start with the inside, 
and then take that answer and plug it into our f function. So for example, we're starting right here, f of g of x. So the first thing we're going to do is identify what g of x is. Well, right here, they listed some things for me. What's g of x? Well, g of x is this guy, x minus 2. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that x minus 2, that is g of x, and I'm going to plug it in to the function before it. So I'm going to do f of g of x, but g of x is x minus 2. So what does that mean? Well, it means I'm going to write down what my f function is. This guy, right, I'm going to write down this, but instead of the letter x, I'm going to plug in g. So right where that x was, I put parentheses. I'm going to fill in what I got there, which is x minus 2 squared. All right, that's it. That's, that's the setup here. We do need to simplify that. And for this problem, it's a little bit rougher just because it's x minus 2 squared. Remember, you know what x minus 2 squared means. That means x minus 2 times x minus 2 and then plus 1. So I'm going to FOIL x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. And then I've got this plus 1 out here. So my final answer is going to be x squared minus 4x plus 5. Really, this is what I need you to know. You take the x minus 2, you plug it into the f equation, and you work from there. We had to simplify a little bit because we had x minus 2 squared to get me to that point, but that's the main idea. So next one says g, open circle, f of x. The little open circle. Oh, yeah, they forgot to put parentheses. So which, which function is on the inside? f of x. So I'm starting with this guy. And what am I going to do with it? I'm going to take it and plug it into the function before it. So plug it into g. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to plug it in to the x value in the other equation. So I'm going to take my g function, which is this guy right here, this something minus 2. But where that x was, I'm going to plug in what I need, which is x squared plus 1. Good. Then we can simplify here. There's nothing squared, so I don't have to do anything fancy. All I got to do is 1 minus 2. My answer is x squared minus 1. <clears throat> Last one, a little bit different. G of G of X. So they're just being mean here. G of G of X. I'm going to throw parentheses, throw parentheses. All right, so what, which function's on the inside? G of X. Well, G of X is X minus 2. I'm taking that and I'm plugging it in to my G, <clears throat> to my G equation. Or in other words, I'm taking this equation right here, and instead of X, I am plugging in what, g of x is, which is x minus 2. So if I put that together, x minus 2 minus 2 is x minus 4. That is my answer. Doing well. Let's keep it rolling. We've got four functions here. Same problem. Now the only difference is we got a number. All right. Don't let the numbers wear you down. We're doing p of h of 9 p of h of 9. So we're going to start off by doing the inside, which is finding h of 9. Well, what does that mean? It means I'm taking 9 and plugging it in for x. So h of 9 is the square root of 9. Well, what's the square root of 9? That's 3. So I know what h of 9 is. h of 9 is 3. So I'm going to take that answer that I got and plug it into the p equation now. So it's p of 3, because that's what h of 9 was. Well, p of 3 is, I'm looking using this equation right here, so I'm doing 3 squared plus 1 over 2 times 3. A little bit annoying, but 3 squared is 9, plus 1 is 10, divided by 6, reduce that guy, and we can divide them both by 2, 5 thirds is my final answer. Let's do the next one, f of f of negative 2. So I'm starting off with the inside. I'm doing f of negative 2. That means I'm taking negative 2 and I'm plugging it into the f equation. So negative 2 squared plus 1. What is negative 2 squared? Well, negative 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5. Cool. So I know what this answer is right here. This answer right there is 5. So now what I need to solve is f of that answer that I got, f of 5. So I'm going to take 5, plug it in there, 5 squared plus 1. 
that gets me 26. So we found the answer of the inside. Whatever number we get, we plug it into the equation before it. We got our setup. All right, with equations, pretty easy. With tables, maybe even easier. All right, don't let this be tough for you. So f of g of negative 1. I'm going to start on the inside, g of negative 1. Well, what they did here is they gave me a table. Here is g. I want to know when my x value is negative 1, what's my y value? Well, my y value is negative 1. That's what g of negative 1 is. g of negative 1 is negative 1. So now that I've found this answer, I'm taking this answer and plugging it into f. So now I'm doing f of negative 1. f of negative 1, so I'm going to the f column. I'm going to the negative one row. Hey, guess what? My final answer is zero. All right, let's try it again. Number eight, f of f of zero. So throw a parenthesis, throw a parenthesis. We're starting off with the inside, f of zero. F column, the zero number, what do I get? I get one. So this is now f of one because this answer was one. Great, do it again. So I'm doing the f column. This time I'm doing the one row, f of one is three, and so the answer to that question is three. Last one, g of f of g of zero. g of f of g is zero. Ew. Yuckies, let's do it anyways. We're gonna start on the inside. So g of zero is my inside guy, g of zero. g of zero. What's g of zero? That's zero. We're doing f next. So we got that answer. Now that I know what this is, I'm taking zero and I'm plugging it into the function before it. So I'm gonna do f of zero. I'm doing this part. So now I'm doing this guy, f of zero. Oh, f of zero is one. Great, so this whole answer was one. Well, I'm gonna take that answer and plug it into the function before it. So g of one. So g of one, oh, that number is one. That is my final answer. And that's it. We could do this forever. If I asked you to find g of f of g of f of two, whoo, there's a lot of parentheses going on there. We could do this, no problem, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna this is weird, but I'll do it. f of two, f of two is four. Oh, we already broke the system. All right, pick a different number besides two. Uh, let's do three. All right, let's try this again because four is not in my X column. F of three. F of three is negative one. So then I'm doing G of negative one. G of negative one is negative one. So now I'm doing F of negative one. F of negative one is zero. And then I'm doing G of zero. G at zero is zero. That's it. I, I could do a billion of those. It's not hard. It's just a matter of plugging in whatever you get for the first one into the next one. And then when you get that answer, plug it into the next one, plug it in the next one and so on. All right, don't let those be weird to you. You can handle it. All right, let's try one last one here. We could do it with graphs. And so again, this is something that I've found in calculus we do a lot of. So I just wanted you to see it. All right, let's say I gave you G of F of two g of f of 2. If I'm doing g of f of 2, I'm going to start off with the inside, f of 2. So guess what? We're going to look at my f graph. I'm going to where my x value is 2. I know it's x because it's f of x always. And so whatever's inside the parentheses is my x value. So f of 2, I'm going to go right here. What is my y value? It's 3. So then I'm going to take that information and I'm going to use it to find g of 3. So I'm going to go to my g graph. This three is my X value. What's my Y value? Oh, that's weird. I'm doing this value right here. What's that Y value? The Y value is zero. So G of F of two is zero. Last one, let's just make up another one. Let's go F of G of F of zero. G of F of it, G F of G of F of zero. Again, I just like throwing things at you because you can do it. F of zero. All right, so that means I'm going to my F graph. I'm going to my zero. What's my Y value? Well, this Y value is four. So I did that one. I'm gonna take that four. I'm gonna plug it into the function before it. So I'm gonna plug it into G. So I'm going to my G graph. G graph. Here's my X value of four. What's my Y value? Well, my Y value is also four. 
So that's 4. And then to finish, I'm doing f of 4. So I'm going to go back to my f graph. f at 4 is this guy right here. That is also 0. Hope you that makes sense. I like composite functions. They're kind of a game. Which thing do I plug them into and work from there? Hope it makes sense to you. If not, as always, ask me some questions.